So I'm Dr. Glenn Davies. And I'm Emma Malpass. And what's that? This is a bat. Yes, it's normally used for ping pong, but today I'm going to use it every time I do not understand something that Glenn is going to say. I'm going to hold up the bat on the red side. Stop. Okay. Because okay. I do have the habit of sometimes making things a little bit too complicated. So yes. what we're trying to do is make the topic HbA1c as simple as possible. Sounds good. Okay. So HbA1c. What the hell does that mean? Sounds right. very complicated. Okay. HbA1c is well this part here is hemoglobin and hemoglobin's a component of your red blood cells yeah. and it's the amount of sugar that sticks to your red blood cells all right stop so does sugar always stick to your red blood cells does that happen in, in every case good point um, we should say excess blood sugar okay so do you know how much sugar you're supposed to have in your blood at any one time? Have a guess. Um, we got five litres of blood. How much sugar do you reckon is in five litres of blood? Oh, five teaspoons? Five teaspoons. One teaspoon, actually less than a teaspoon. So if you stick a teaspoon of sugar in your coffee, you've doubled the amount of sugar in your blood. Okay, that's not good. That's not good. Because <laughs> actually, anything else you double in your blood, you die. If you double potassium, yeah. that's actually the lethal injection they give you to kill people in the United States. So you don't yeah. want to double anything in your blood. No. Okay, are we getting off track? No, yes we are. Let's okay. get back okay. on track. So this is uh, hemoglobin. Yeah. And this is, oh let's use a different colour actually. This is the amount of glucose that's stuck to it. Now if you got a little... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you've got a little bit of glucose, then that's okay. If you've got a lot of glucose, then that's not a good thing at all. Stop. So this is purely from eating too much sugar. When you say glucose, you're talking about sugar. Sugar. Um, sugar. But interestingly, not just sugar. All carbohydrates become okay. blood sugar. So I'm also talking about bread, even your healthy vogel bread. I'm also talking okay. about pasta, um, flour, rice. Is that carbohydrates? Those are all right. carbohydrates. So any carbohydrate becomes blood sugar, and then that blood sugar sticks to stuff. It's all right to have a little bit of glucose stuck to your hemoglobin. You don't want a whole lot. No. Okay, so... HbA1c, if it is 20 to 40, I think it's millimoles per litre, is yep. that correct? Yes. Then that is normal. All right. If it is 41 to 49, that is pre-diabetes. And if it is 50 and above, then that is diabetes. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, if you're pre-diabetic, what is happening here? Because is, would this be happening in pre-diabetes? Would, would there be a lot of glucose let's, Yeah, let's go uh, If that's normal, that would be maybe the amount that's stuck in pre-diabetes, and this is the amount that's stuck in diabetes. So a little bit, a moderate amount, a whole heap. Okay, so this is getting very complicated. But why are these glucose all stuck to this hemoglobin and not going off there and going into the cells? I don't understand that. Why are they all stuck there? Well, as opposed to when you're not diabetic, they're all it's normal. Yeah, that's a really good question. I reckon we should cover that next week because that's Thank called you, insulin yes. resistance. <laughs> Okay. And that's okay. really what's behind this whole process. But let's just stick to HbA1c. Okay. So I'm going to give you an analogy. Yeah. So say, Emma, I say, Emma, I'm going to come and visit you on Sunday. Yeah. And I'm going to bring to your home this sugar solution in a squeezy bottle. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to take the sugar solution in a squeezy bottle. I'm going to spray it onto your couch. Yeah. I'm going to spray it on your mattress. 
Then mm. don't do that. No, why don't you want me to spray that it's sugar? It's going to be solution? all sticky. Yeah, so whenever you stick, sit on your couch, you're going to stick to it. Yes. And the dirt's going to stick to it, eh? That's why we don't want sticky blood. We okay. want blood like this. We don't want it's sticky blood. Sticky. Okay, because this is what we measure, the amount of glucose sticking to the haemoglobin molecule, yeah. but it's sticking to every part of our body, every protein yeah. in the body. So in diabetics, it can stick to the back of the eyes, yeah. and that's why we well, we get concerned about eye damage. It can stick to your kidneys, and we get worried about kidney damage. It can stick to the nerves in your feet, and you can get numb feet. Okay, hold on, hold on. So does this happen without you even realising? It can happen without you realising, yeah. Oh, wow, not good. And also, it can stick to your cholesterol molecules, and that's part of the okay. um, heart attacks and strokes. Okay, so that leads, so it's all connected. It's all connected. Mm. So that's why we don't want sticky blood. And so when we do this blood test, we want it to be in this range here, yes. 20 to 40. We don't want it to be in this pre-diabetes range, and we certainly don't want it to be in the diabetes range. But if you do get an HbA1c that's higher than 40, yeah. you can turn that around. Yes. So it's pretty obvious how you turn that around, isn't it? You don't put your glucose in your blood, by, so you don't eat your carbohydrates, yeah. and in particular, don't eat sugar. And even yes. worse, don't drink sugar. Yes. So don't drink sugar, don't eat sugar, and restrict the amount of carbohydrates you eat yep. so that you're not... Stop. What? So if I do all of this, yes. can I repeat my test in what period of time to see if it's improved? I reckon um, three months is ideal. The reason okay. is because when it sticks to the hemoglobin, it's there permanently. And it takes okay. about three months, I think it's actually 72 days, Yeah. about three months for that haemoglobin to be removed. Yeah. And that's why you see those changes occur over three months. So you will see changes at one month, but I reckon three months is the ideal time to repeat it. And you can see it going from, let's say, 46 back down to normal in three months. Wow. Pre-diabetes, this is the big point. Diabetes and pre-diabetes is not a chronic progression to worsening illness, it's a reversible condition. You can turn it around by avoiding eating carbohydrates. Well, reducing carbohydrates and avoiding sugar. Can I ask you one important question with mm. this? If you have a family history of diabetes, is it harder to achieve that pre-diabetic range, or the not having diabetics, mm. diabetes? I reckon that's a complex question, and I think the answer is both. Yeah. I think your genetics could make it harder, Yeah. but I think everybody can go from pre-diabetes back to normal. Um, well, now that's not even true, but I think most people, yeah. a vast majority of people, can reverse their diabetes and their pre-diabetes. And that should be their, their aim. Yeah. So, don't drink sugar, absolutely yeah. not. Don't add sugar to stuff, yeah. and reduce the amount of carbohydrate, yeah. particularly the, the processed carbohydrate, things made with white flour. Um, try and minimize bread, try and reduce rice, yeah. uh, try and reduce pasta, and just stay away from all those cakes and biscuits, all those things in packets. Yes. Yep, sounds good. Thank you. All right.